Yo, what up, dogs? Welcome back to another movie review. This time, I'm going to be reviewing Magic Mike's Glass Dance. As some of you know, this was on my list for most anticipated films for 2023, and it was listed at number 10. I am a fan of the Magic Mike franchise. I liked Magic Mike 1 when it first came out in 2003. 12 and it had Matthew McConaughey in it as Dallas showing young Magic Mike the ropes of the stripper industry. It's a great film actually. I, I think it's probably the best of the three. And then we have Magic Mike 2 which came out in 2015 and it's pretty much just a road trip with the boys from part one uh, across Florida you know and they're just trying to like raise some money for I think Mike's trying to start a company in that one. And then we get to Magic Mike's Last Dance which is an R-rated comedy drama that runs for about one hour and 52 minutes. It is directed by Steven Sonnenberg, who's come back. He directed number one, by the way. So he came back to direct number three. It's written by Reed Carolyn, who is the producer on Magic Mike 1 and 2. I don't know if he was on 3. And it stars Channing Tatum and Selma Hayek. And the logline listed here is Mike takes to the stage again, following a business deal that went bust, leaving him broke and taking bartender gigs in Florida. Mike heads to London with a wealthy socialite who lures him with an offer he can't refuse. So the first question I have to answer is, did I like this film at all? And I'll be honest with you, I didn't like it at all. It was not that good. It was The story was actually kind of boring. The plot was kind of eh. And the objectives and trials and tribulations from point A to point Z were just not that interesting. But I really liked the dancing in general. There are... It, there, the, the people who are dancing in this film are incredibly talented i was in awe with some of the dancing that went on in this film like so the first strip tease dance with channing tatum and Tama hike that was really well done well choreographed and i'm surprised he can move like that i don't even know how old he is but i'm like dude my knees would be cracking i would love to be the dude on the audio end of this going wow listen to all these bones crack because <laughs> <laughs> some of the moves he was doing are insane like my knees crack when i just go to pick up like pillow from the ground you know what i'm saying i'm not picking up salma hayek <laughs> so that dance was really cool i think all the montage dances of when they try to recruit dancers for the show all those dances are damn good there's a dance on the bus and that is a real dance which is awesome and the final dances are all great but the the best dance in the whole movie is the absolute finale dance which is the water dance and if you get to just watch that dance alone it's amazing the i can't believe that dance like it was damn good <laughs> damn good and i would like to also point out there is no nudity in this film at all just so you know, in case you're thinking you're going to see some R-rated action, you're not. There's nothing in this film. You see muscles and that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, yeah, that's it. There's no boobies, no nothing. It's just muscles and the occasional swear word. That's all you're going to get for your R rating. So let's go into the movie a little bit here to explain why I didn't like it. Because there's elements of it that are just missing from Magic Mike. And I think the one main element that is absolutely missing from this is... The characters, you're sort of like, like with Magic Mike 1 and 2, you really are invested in these characters. So you're invested in Magic Mike and his journey and his story. And you're also invested in the characters that bring him along in his journey into the world of stripping. Like the characters are all memorable. Like Matthew McConaughey played Dallas right and then you have tarzan which is played by kevin nash like these are memorable characters you also have big blank richie right played by joe mangello i i know i pronounced his last name incorrect but these are all characters that you just know and you remember them and they carry over to the next film you know what i'm saying like and that's something that's actually quite missing in this film like sure they hired all these characters these the boys as i like to call them but you don't know nothing about them you don't know anything you know i don't even think you know their names to be perfectly honest with you and that's a detriment to this movie because i would have liked to have seen magic mike interact with these english lads or these european lads and learn about them and show them the ropes because like if you remember what happens in magic mike one he he is not a stripper, you know, like he like not, not a professional stripper, and he becomes one under the tutelage of Dallas. So when he goes to Europe, London, to run this strip show with Maxandra, you would think that these dancers who 
are not strippers. They, they, they never mentioned that these are traditional strippers or anything like that. These are dancers, especially the one that Maxandra picks out from, I think he's from Rome. And we don't even get to know much about him. He's just a damn good dancer. And he really is. But we don't actually ever see any scenes where Magic Mike is literally talking to these guys. Like Dallas talked to him to pass on the knowledge of what it is to be a stripper. I think that was really missing in this film was kind of the mentorship that magic mike has that he could have brought to these characters and we don't get to really know these characters we don't get to know their experiences their drives their motivations why they're here other than we're getting paid that's really it that's all you hear is like we're getting paid it's it's just it's just lacking i think that's the main thing that's and i know you're gonna sit there and go brett come on dog you're expecting so much out of a Magic Mike movie. But Magic Mike 1 and 2 are so damn good. So I do expect something good from Magic Mike 3. I'm a fan of the franchise. I'm I'm not I'm not joking. <laughs> I like the franchise and if I were to write this it would have been something totally different but I'm not working in Hollywood yet <laughs> well, just wait guys I'm gonna be making Magic Mike 4 someday or 5 you'll see anyways here's another thing I would like to add that they kind of missed out on Magic Mike has never left America I would like to point that out. He's he's never left. So when he gets plucked and dropped into London, I really felt like there was a missed opportunity to kind of have some fish out of water moments of an American in London for the first time. And that he could have been doing that with the boys, like just learning about the culture, learning about the country. Like they could have had some fun adventures together, but none of that happens at all. Magic Mike is kind of like he is house ridden in London with Maxandra, the butler, and her daughter, stepdaughter, I believe. Here's another problem with this movie, too, is we don't really understand Maxandra's drive in this film. She comes across as a widower or divorcee, but as the film progresses, you find out she's actually getting divorced. And this entire thing is sort of revenge for getting a divorce. And there are some really awkward moments between her and the husband, which are very brief, but just one really awkward scene where he comes out of his room and he's in the kitchen with the daughter and the butler talking. And then the husband shows up. And I remember sitting there with my friend going, what the what the what is going on here and the husband kind of fluffs it off like oh this is just another pet project of hers but as the story goes on the husband's trying to get this project not to happen because it's going to tarnish his family's name for her putting on a strip show as revenge towards this divorce it's an alternative motivation that you find out halfway through the film and you're like what why is this a thing? Anyways, it's not a good plot point at all. And it was just weird, honestly. Because you <laughs> you don't even see the husband. You don't. You don't even see the husband until the midway point. There is one scene where I'm like, is that the husband? I thought he was dead. So it's just, I don't know. Her whole story is kind of confusing as to why she's doing this. There's a couple weird scenes in this movie now that I think about it. There's another weird scene where the daughter... I think she's hanging out with the butler and she's like, oh, I got a text from Magic Mike. The daughter's 12 or 13 or 14. She's super young. She's in high school writing a paper. By the way, the paper is the narrative that is being th threaded throughout the story of this film. And it's her voice. And you're just like, what is this? It's so freaking weird. I was just like, huh? Why is this 40, 50 something year old man texting this 12 year old? Like, why does he even have access to her when he just lives in the house and he's working for his mom? I thought it was the weirdest thing. The weirdest character thing It turned me off. Honestly, it turned me off. I was like, what the hell is that? That shouldn't even be in this movie. That is crazy. But that's just my point of view. I thought it was weird. He doesn't know her. Like, they're not related. Like, I just thought it was so weird that he was ran like he randomly texted her. I digress. There's another weird scene in this, which is actually at the end of the movie when the finale, like stripping is going on. Like they're putting on the show full go, no more delays. Who cares what the family says? She's going to do it. Let's do it. And um, the daughter's at the strip club front front row with the butler. The butler's sitting beside her and a strip club show is going on. And the butler's like this the whole time. Like, are you kidding me? What is what is that? <laughs> right? Like I'm sitting there watching this. I look at my friend. I'm like, what is this? 
What is like I did I said what is this so many times during this film. I was just kept looking over at her going, What is this? What is this? So that was dumb. And there is a part in there where the butler's like, Oh, we have to leave because Magic Mike said the final dance is too risque for any any young adult to be at. And I'm like, why is there a young adult there in the first place? This is a strip show. This is adult content. This isn't for a high school kid. Like Get out of there. It, like, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. I'm sorry. It did. It rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't understand why that child was there for that. Don't care for it. It's like, get that out of here. That is just not right. This is adult content. This is an R-rated movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is an R-rated movie. This premise is an adult content. Stripping is adult content. Why is there a young adult? Not even a young adult. A teenager at the strip club and then she's told to leave because the final dance is too sexy and you're like what so she leaves with the butler they both go outside in the waiting room of the auditorium or theater and then they do the final dance which is great by the way the final dance is great that's the whole movie right there honestly i don't think i spoiled anything because i went very high level cliff notes only i think that's all i have to say about magic mike i hope i didn't ruin it too much i i tried my best not to spoil it and just left like cole's notes of the things i didn't like in this film and what i did like so here's the final question would i buy this movie for my collection and i'm going to be honest with you guys i don't own magic mike one or two yet because i have not found them in the wild but when i do i will buy them and they will be a part of my collection but until then will i buy magic mike 3 i probably will have to buy it because i'd want it for the collection of all three of them together that's about it there's no other reason for me to own it other than the completion of the franchise i will probably never watch this movie again I don't actually recommend it to anybody because unless you're unless you're a Magic Mike fan, then sure, watch it and you might like it. You might not like it. But if you've never watched a Magic Mike movie and this is your introduction to Magic Mike, I highly recommend you don't watch this and hold out and go and find a copy of Magic Mike 1, stream it, download it do whatever you need to do to watch that and enjoy that movie first before you get into the last dance so that's the end of the review and i just want to say to you guys thank you for listening and give me a couple minutes of your day to hear me talk about magic mike's last dance and if you guys have anything to say about this review please leave a comment i'm always down to listen to your feedback and if you guys have any suggestions of what to add to or take away i'm always open to listening to those suggestions Thank you again and have a good weekend, everyone, and enjoy the movies.